All right, welcome back. Uh, with today's review, we are going to be taking a look at a, uh, a new model out of China, or a new knife company out of China. And the knife company in question is Steedmon Knives, and this is their Deep Sea Monster. Um, so, this is actually a form pass around, and so I'm the third individual to get this knife. Um, and that's important to consider because there are a few problems with this knife. And um, I think the majority of those problems came straight from the factory. Although, you know, being that I'm not the first owner, I can't attribute everything to that. But anyways, I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, first, let me kind of show you the uh, presentation that the knife comes with. Um, it comes in this little pelican-y style case. Um, quality is so-so. Um, and uh, there's the knife brand. Now, kind of as a side note, um, you know, as of late, there have been a lot of companies that have been stepping it up with presentation and the way that um, the knife arrives, um, you know, both production, custom, um, you know, mid-tech, the whole nine yards, and really you have people kind of bitching about the presentation isn't good enough or they put too much money into the presentation and people feel like they're wasting money on the box when they don't give a damn about the box. If it's me, um, you know, from my two cents, if it's too much or too little, give me too much. Um, so the box is fine. Um, difficult to open. Comes with a nice little uh, cloth that's branded. Uh, it's kind of like Chris Reeve does, I suppose. Then it comes with a nice um, kind of satin pouch thing here. So anyways, just a little bit on the presentation. I like that they're doing something, that's great. So the knife in question, um, really what initially attracted me to this knife and this brand, and this brand, if you haven't heard of them before, they are new. Um, just like a lot of other companies, they popped up this last year. They are China-based. Um, but what really attracted me to this knife was the was the beautiful handle pattern. Um, I guess this is like a Yenzo Anzo style pattern, I believe. Um, Maybe it's slightly different now that I'm thinking about it, but anyhow, basically you have uh, titanium. It's been uh, machined or milled to give it a, a great pattern, a great texture, and I've always been interested in um, a titanium knife that had these type of, of grooves or cutouts in the handles. Um, I've always wanted one. I've always wanted to try one, but for the most part, they're predominantly on custom knives um, and ones that I'm kind of out of my reach at the moment, so... Anyhow, I saw this, I was really attracted to it, um, and I really like it, it's actually um, really cool. So let's get this open, and then let's talk about the specs real quick. So we have a, uh, we have a D2 blade, a uh, beautiful satin blade, it's got a nice uh, belt uh, finish on there. Um, handles are titanium, they're TC4 titanium I believe, and uh, again they have that wonderful milling mark titanium pocket clip. It uses the one screw and then that little uh, protrusion style there. Nice lanyard uh, hole on the back. Um, ergonomics are fantastic. Great in hand. Um, I think the knife and the company really has a lot going on for it, but again there are a few problems with it. The blade length is three and three quarters. Um, pretty much the cutting edge from here down to here is about three and three quarters and then the handle is just about five inches. So you're looking at about eight and three quarters overall. Let me uh, let me pull up the weight real quick. This is a heftier knife. Let me tear it. Then I'll measure it. So let's go to ounces. So about 7.2 ounces. Um, pretty hefty knife. If you're familiar with one of my other reviews, here's a quite a comparable knife in terms of the size and likely the weight. If you have one of these, this is weighing in about 7.65, so a little bit lighter. But anyways, let's get back to the blade. So there are a lot of things that I like. Again, a few problems, the first of which you'll be able to hear. That is the sound of a loose pivot. So I'm the third guy to get this knife, and the first, um, the first person to get it was the moderator on Blade Forms, Maro. And he said that, um, you know, a few problems when he received the knife, the first of which was that the detent was super, super strong and it was difficult to open the knife um, using this kind of oval thumb hole here. So, 
Um, that was an issue. And then he said he tightened the pivot before he sent it out. Second guy got it, or the first guy on the list essentially after the moderator, and he tightened the pivot, um, sent it out, and then the second guy got it and he tightened the pivot, um, and he sent it out, and I'm the third guy to get it, and the pivot is, again, loose, quite, quite loose. Um, and it uses this um, hex on one side here, and then on this side you'll need something to get into these grooves. I don't really have anything handy, so I haven't been able to tighten it down again or take it apart and lock tight it. There are a few scratches, as you can see in there, from people having to go in and tighten it. So you can see it's been marred up a little bit. So um, it's definitely been tightened a few times, and I just didn't really feel like going in and lock tightening it and trying to tighten it a third time. So the, the pivot's loose, and that does create some play, obviously. Uh, you, you won't be able to see it, but yeah, there's a little bit of play in the blade, of course, because the pivot's loose. Um, the other large problem is that the um, over travel stop here <clears throat> which I'm assuming is not licensed before people start throwing that in the comments let's just assume it's not um, this Torx uh, this is actually loose as well um, and then I went to go tighten it and the Torx is actually stripped out now again since I am the third person on the list and essentially the fourth person to see this knife I can't say that it came that way from the factory. I don't know if someone else tried to tighten and stripped it. No one said that they did, but in terms of, of good practice, um, as a reviewer, I really don't know um, if it came that way from factory. But this is stripped, this is loose, um, and it keeps becoming more and more loose. So, anyways, aside from the fact that the pivot's loose, the centering is actually perfect, um, and I have no problem deploying it or disengaging the knife at all despite the fact that it is a loose pivot. So in terms of functionality, it's it's functioning perfectly. Um, you know, it's got a little side-to-side -side play right now, but so does the access lock if you want that to open uh, well. Um, another assumption of mine is that, assuming I did tighten down the pivot to the point where it was nice and tight, that might put, um, that might make it difficult to open the knife, which is what um, Maru, the moderator, had had commented, that it was quite difficult to open. So. Maybe the fact that I can open it readily and reliably is due to the fact that the pivot's loose. So, anyways, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. I'm not telling you it's a bad product. I'm just saying that this particular one um, does have a few concerns in terms of the uh, the quality or the final fit and finish um, of a pass around model, which you would assume would be perfect since people are going to be reviewing it. So. And you know, that really comes down to the question of, is it a lemon? Is it indicative of the entire product line? Um, is it something that needs to be tweaked in this first round or the first um, batch of knives? And this one was from the first batch. Um, the company rep, when we I asked, are you going to be sending out a new model for the past round? And unfortunately, they were all sold out. Um, so he didn't have any other ones to send out, apparently, which is good for business, I suppose, but um, not good for a forum pass around. But anyways, so again, <clears throat> I'm not saying this is indicative of the entire line. I tend to be an optimist and just say, hey, <clears throat> perhaps this one has some issues. Um, you know, maybe it needs to have some red Loctite on the pivot. You just need to find the sweet spot and just nail that in uh, permanently. Um, I have no qualms using Loctite on my access locks once I find that sweet spot too kind of find, you know, in between the too much side-to-side -side movement versus being able to open it reliably. So it's, it's not something that I'm unaccustomed to by any means. But anyways, let's focus on really the good qualities of the knife. Um, it's called the Deep Sea Monster, and really it's, it's, it's quite a beautiful design. I really like it. Um, it's its own design. I haven't seen anything that I feel like it's ripping off, as most people will want to assume since it's a new company out of China. Um, it's got this kind of this beautiful harpoon blade. Um, I love the satin finish, the belt finish that they did on this D2, which um, is Rockwell to 60. Um, I like the fact that it uses a this kind of oval style to open the blade. I think it's a nice design element as well as a useful functional piece on the knife. Just a beautiful blade shape, nice tip. Um, you could really get some work done with that tip if you needed to. The um, the edge on this knife is, it came quite sharp, um, even though I was the third person on the list, but it's nice and even on both sides, which is something you don't see from 
uh, too many companies, I suppose, or not every company. Um, here are the markings. It's a D2 blade. This is number 98, made in 2014. So, um, blade is beautiful, nice and sharp, nice even grinds. Um, I think they did an excellent job on the, on the blade, on the execution of this part here. We've already talked about the pivot. Uh, you know, I haven't heard anything about whether or not you void the warranty for taking it apart, so obviously something that's a bit more accessible to the user would be nice. And, you know, I might have 10 or 20 comments from guys saying, oh, if you just use this, you could have secured this side down and taken apart without a problem. Maybe. I couldn't find anything. I don't want to scratch it all up. So um, it was not very user friendly to me, although there are people out there that perhaps have the necessary tool for this side here. So anyways, uh, jimping on top is nice and functional. The prim um, primarily jimping is found here on the handle. Um, and then you have a little bit on the blade. It's all very functional. Locks your hand in very, very well. So well done on the jimping. The actual handle itself, um, again, I love the pattern. I love the fact that it is a, um, you know, milled in this, I don't know, it looks kind of like a katana wrap or maybe it's the Aunt Yen Zanzu type pattern. But it's, it's beautiful. And what it does is it offers a very, very comfortable uh, experience in the hand. It just, um, you have all these little grooves where your fingers just fall into um, and it gives confidence in the grip without being, you know, gritty or anything. It's got, you know, the smooth bead blasted finish. It's going to get that pocket worn look. So if you're a Chris Reeve fan and you like the pocket worn look, this knife will pick it up um, quite readily, I'd assume. So already some marks on the, uh, the pocket clip there as you'd expect. So I love the handle. Um, this is the first time I've seen it in a production knife, especially in this price range, which I believe are less than 200. Um, the sources where you can pick these up are on their Facebook page, and then they also sell on the aliexpress.com, I believe it is. So the handle is very well executed, very well done. I really like the way it feels. The lockup um, is perfect. Uh, again, I can't tell you that there's no play because the pivot's loose, but assuming that the pivot was tight, I don't think there'd be any play. It engages right at about oh, maybe 20, 30%, but it's, it's um, quite nice engagement, no stick whatsoever, um, no up and down play by any means. So um, I think they did a great job with the execution of the, um, of the lock cutout, the lock bar there. And then it's, again, it's smooth. It's very smooth, it uses phosphor bronze washers. It's very smooth, but again, with the problems with the pivot, I can't, I can't really speak for the entire product line. I don't know if maybe they aren't very smooth because the pivot has to be super tight to keep it from having any play. I mean, there are a lot of unknowns because of the problem with the pivot, but what I can tell you is that it's the lockup seems to be perfect and it is smooth and centered with even with the problems. So, um, backspacer. Um, I believe it's also titanium. I didn't take a magnet to it. It wasn't too... Um, worried about it really um, but uh, yes titanium pocket clip retention is very very strong um, a little too strong but I think it'll loosen up over time if, if it was carried certainly so anyways I think that's pretty much it let's take a look at some size comparisons posted a picture of these two on Instagram and again with the deceiving camera angle you can't tell but they're pretty much the exact same size um, pivot to pivot and uh, yeah, this one didn't come with any problems whatsoever. So the District 9, this is the Riate one. But yeah, anyway, same size, pivot to pivot. This one's a little bit heavier as we saw earlier, but um, kind of that same overbuilt fill. The ergonomics are definitely better on this one. Uh, let's talk about that for a sec. So it starts out a little bit bigger here and then it continues to um, to get thinner as we head towards the, the end of the knife or the butt of the knife. And that lends itself well to the excellent ergonomics in hand, along with this great pattern that you get to feel. So I, I really, really like it. I wish this one came perfect. Um, I think they just have a, I think they have a lot going for it. I love the design. Um, it's just a few things need to be fixed with this particular model. There was a pass around that went around the f German knife forms as well. And I don't recall there being any issues with that one. Um, so again, perhaps just this one is a lemon, but uh, 
a lot of good things going on for it. They have another version too. Um, this is the satin with the bead blast that I believe they have in kind of an acid stone wash um, blade and handle combination as well. Uh, here's my line steel SR1 with the Chad Nichols Damascus and it is smaller. Not as ergonomic, but it's it's got a lot going for it. So I don't know why I bother doing the size comparisons. The camera angle does not help. Uh, last but not least, my ZT600, which is a good half inch, three quarters of an inch longer. So, anyways, but yeah. So overall, um, I think I think they're off to a good start. This uh, this Steedmon company out of China. Um, original designs, great fit and finish on the aspects that we talked about, beautiful blade shape, great blade finish, nice and sharp, <clears throat> even bevels, I mean it's just a lot going on for it, I wish it, I could say it was perfect, I wish I could give it 100%, um, but just keep your eyes and ears open, I'm sure there's some threads on various forums about people and their experience and their quality, but um, you know, I'll, I'm probably going to give them a shot later on. I may end up picking up uh, one of these models because I, I really like a lot of what they've done. Deep Sea Monster, I think it, it fits the knife perfectly. It's just, uh, I don't know, it, uh, you see this thing and you're like, yeah, I, I get that. And then the logo, I believe this is STD, which made me chuckle the first time that I realized they're, yeah, anyways. So one last look at the knife here, and then we will go ahead and end it. If you have any comments or questions, I will do the best that I can to answer them, um, but this knife will be going off to the fourth person on the pass around soon enough. So it'll be out of my hands soon. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the videos and take care.